Hey everyone, Jeff Lee here, taking a look at the newest camera from Vision Research, the Veo 640S. Now the Veo is a new family of cameras, sort of sits in between the Miro and the Flex family. Uh, the 640S is uh, just one of the many models available, but we think it's sort of the most well-rounded for our applications and our industry. So the 640 indicates that it has the fastest uh, throughput and highest resolution uh, that we find useful. So 2560 by 1600 resolution. Uh, at that res, lets you capture up to 1500 frames a second. At HD resolution, you'll capture about 2820 frames a second. Uh, now, it does utilize the same sensor as the Flex 2K uh, and the Miro for that fact. So same 2K sensor, same capping shutter. Uh, it does, of course, come in internal uh, RAM capacities uh, ranging from 18, 36, or 72 gigabytes. Uh, so at 72 gigabytes, you'll be able to capture uh, even a full resolution, full frame rate, uh, about eight seconds of real time. Uh, unlike the Miro or the Flex family, though, it does capture two uh, CFast 2.0 cards. So it does not utilize the CineMags or CineFlash cards that you find on the other camera bodies. CFast 2.0 cards, of course, are the same cards you'd find in an Alexa Mini or in a Miro, for example, which is great, obviously, because the cost uh, you know, to gigabyte ratio is much better on CFast 2.0 cards, a lot easier to find. Uh, they are slightly slower than the CineFlash or CineMags that you find on the other cameras. So something to keep in mind uh, as you're working with the camera is to uh, you know, maybe work with partitions so you can write to the CFast cards from the RAM while you're looping on the other partition uh, so you don't miss any key uh, elements. Uh, I mentioned it does use the same sensor as the uh, Miro. Uh, so of course it also utilizes the same lens mount options, which is great. So Nikon, Canon, uh, PL, or C mount are all available as well. Now the biggest difference, of course, is it's physically much smaller. There is an S model, which is a full featured, as well as an L for light model. The L model does not have this additional sidebar or a uh, additional 3G SDI output that the S model does have. So uh, we'll primarily be working, we think, with the S model for that reason. Uh, and you know, we'll do a little bit of a tour on the camera. I want to show you some of the inputs and outputs, as well as some of the things that we've built to make this camera really useful out in the field. So just to take a quick look at the camera, uh, looking at the front here, you have this mini uh, DIN cable, or it's labeled SDI, but basically a mini DIN cable, as well as an HDMI port. This is meant for your viewfinder or monitoring options. There is also a four pin Hiroshi for viewfinder power. Uh, I'm not using it at the moment because I'm using PTAP power, but it does exist for that reason. Uh, on the side here is the sort of difference in why the S model exists or what the key difference between the S versus the L is that you have this additional bank of inputs and outputs. So you have your, you know, for example, trigger, your time code in, your frame sync, et cetera, all on the side here. On the back is where you have your SDI output as well as your command wheel and toggle, your black reference, your playback, and your tools buttons are all here as well. Uh, there are these two inputs here, so we've built this cable here because they've had to consolidate everything into a much smaller body. Uh, some of the ports are uh, sort of dual purpose. So both of these are actually labeled uh, voltage inputs for power. This one on the right-hand side is 12 volt DC, one on the left says 16 to 32 volts DC inputs. Um, but the one on the left actually also serves as your remote or your PCU or RCU. Uh, interface. So if you wanted to use a PCU or the Bluetooth dongle, for example, you'd have to use this port as well. And the one on the right is actually what we're using to feed power into the camera. So we've built this cable. Uh, I'm going to call it temporary, and I'll tell you why in a few seconds, but this is sort of a temporary solution. Let's just take 4-pin XLR from this uh, Cameo side plate here and feed power in. Splits it also gives us this Y splitter to go to our PCU. So right now I have our PCU2 plugged into this uh, hardwired at the moment. In the future, of course, they're working on a prototype version of this uh, Veo Bob. This is right now obviously a little rough. It's a prototype, so uh, excuse the 3D printed plastic and the aluminum. But this is the idea is you mount something like this on the side or on the top of the camera body. Gives us two 4-pin XLR inputs, so basically lets you hot swap. Uh, has all the same control interfaces, but lets you then plug in the PCU or the Bluetooth dongle uh, up top here. So it sort of takes all the functionality of this cable and makes it uh, much cleaner and much easier to use package. So on this camera, we've rigged it out with several different Cameo accessories. So you have our Cameo Essentials Kit, which includes this top and bottom plate. They are the same, so they can be flipped or flopped, doesn't really matter. Uh, this rosette bar on the side and top handle. Also includes this uh, Phantom Riser plate, lets you put on a bridge plate of some sort if you want to put on uh, airy uh, accessories. Uh, on all of our accessories, just mentioning Airy, uh, everything here is drilled out for 3 8 16 or quarter 20, but also has the locating pins from the Airy style accessories, so the two locating pins. Um, it does come with that, a lot of our accessories come with that little piece, so anti-rotation uh, is great using the locating pins as well. 
Uh, my favorite thing probably to come out from the cameo line um, is the swivel mount. So like the name suggests, let's just swivel or articulate this viewfinder or the screen. You can have it mounted on top like I do here or on the other camera there, I have it mounted on the side, kind of like a traditional camcorder almost. But it's great because it's toolless, it just locks via friction. You can control the tightness if you're using a much heavier monitor. But on this, uh, you know, 509 or 502 small HD is just fine with sort of the stock friction and it just works really, really well being able to move it uh, as I need to. The uh, side plate here is also great having a battery option mounted on the side. If you're using it for aerial or gimbal applications, it's great to keep everything nice and compact. If you want to use a more sort of a traditional cinema application, you can use a battery plate like the one we have there from Winning Camera. So their battery slide works just great. Have a four pin XLR feeding into currently the Miro Bob and then supplies power to uh, the rest of the accessories. So speaking of PCU2, there is also now a new PCU2 Plus. So the Plus is made out of aluminum. It's a little bit more robust, a little bit more, uh, a little stronger. Uh, much uh, higher capacity internal battery, so it lasts about you know, days and days, it seems like, based on our uh, testing. Uh, but one of the neatest things is that it will also now recharge via this multi-pin connector. So you no longer need to plug it in via the DC or AC mains. You can have it plugged into the control cable like this, and it'll keep it recharged as well. And when you want to disconnect to use the wireless capabilities, you just unplug it, and you're ready to go. It's still running on the internal batteries. Uh, which is obviously pretty handy to have. So we, uh, you know, really looking forward to seeing where this camera and where the creators out there will take this camera. Loving the form factor, loving the performance out of the sensor and the way the image looks. It's really, really clean. And we're really uh, looking forward to seeing what you guys will do more with this. So that's it for now. That was sort of a first look at the Veo 640S and some of the Cameo accessories. Uh, stay tuned for more.